Hello and welcome back. It's day 76 of this growing series with this raspberry cane. And as you can see, there's been a lot more growth. The banana peel smoothie has broken up into plates. They're somewhat rubbery, somewhat porous. I'll show you more later. Some of these leaves are curled, but everything's got a lot bigger. And this thing that I think is a primal cane is getting longer. Uh, some people think it might just be an offshoot uh, activated node that took off a little bit after I buried it. So regardless of what it is, uh, I got to call it something. So uh, I was just calling it a primal cane, but it's growing the fastest out of all the shoots so far. So it's uh, really nice how those new compound leaves look with the three prongs and they're all ruffled like uh, potato chips. So uh, everything's going pretty well and I don't foresee any problems. I, I just don't see any bugs. Uh, things are growing faster than ever. There might have been some yellowing of leaves earlier on, but um, that's more towards the top, those top three nodes. And some of those compound leaves up there are getting big as well and there's continual growth. I know the stuff that's around the old fluorocane is all um, curled and some of it's deformed and just small. I think that was due to poor nutrition in the beginning. Remember this is mostly still in potting mix. I did heap on some clay loam later on and I really think that's what rescued the whole situation. Well not rescued as in this thing was in dire straits but I could tell that it wasn't going to do too well. You can see here two compound leaves that remain small are somewhat yellow green they've got these uh, mottled yellow spots i think that was just stuff that grew foliage that grew when this plant was purely in potting mix it wasn't receiving proper nutrition because as i've said many times i don't think potting mix can establish good connections with the root systems of these plants and very few of the plants i've grown on this channel have done well until um, they formed a root ball that could take over everything and drink directly from water at the bottom. So as you can see the banana peel smoothies dried out pretty quickly and then they lost volume by baking in the sun and hence all the cracking and peeling. They still retain the consistency these plates of uh, banana peels. They're very soft. Um, yeah, they're porous. Banana peels are are waterproof I think for the most part. So nowadays when I water, water passes through very quickly. In the beginning when I layered on all that clay loam from the outside it's uh, a water repellent initially if it's very very dry. It takes a lot for water to get in there, a lot of time and effort but after everything's been wetted repeatedly it just goes through very quickly so drainage isn't a problem at all and water as much as I want. It's going in pretty much as fast as I'm watering, which is great. So it's day 80, and as you can see four days later, there's been a lot of growth. These compound leaves are much bigger. Each leaflet is quite sizable. That's a great sight. I really think this is due to the vastly increased nutrition and the fine particles that seeped in there, no doubt, have made contact with all the roots existing ones and developing ones and hence the plants able to absorb a lot more nutrition and it's constantly in a process of sending out more compound leaves so it's a very attractive plant it's becoming a little bit more bushy than I thought it would be I thought it would just be these spindly canes um, with not that much in the way of foliage I didn't even think the leaves would get this big to be honest but I think adding that wild dirt in the clay loam has really, really helped. So this thing is taking on more of a cane appearance rather than just being um, yet another bunch of petioles in terms of width and robustness. So the plant's devoting most of its resources to this new growth that's coming out of the bottom, not so much towards the top. That's counterintuitive. I thought that most of the growth would have occurred at the top really especially at the very top node because there's a lot more room to grow up there 
but uh, apparently the plant has other plans in mind so I don't know how long it's going to take for this banana peel smoothie that's all congealed into what looks like decaying banana peels but uh, that's the way it's sort of meant to be is for nutrients to trickle in down into the soil every time I water from the top and that's how it should be in nature so I read that banana peels are somewhat deficient in nitrogen in terms of macronutrient amounts ratios compared to potassium and phosphorus of course there are trace elements as well I'm sure there are some of those present I think the best fertilizer if we're blending up uh, organic plant matter and just pouring it on top would be to pull up some weeds for the purpose of saving money and if they're invasive weeds all the better for the environment because going out there and buying some vegetables tubers and leaves would quickly prove expensive although maybe you'd only need to do it once for my purposes for the cycle of growing a plant once for a few months to turn it into a plant growing series but if the plant got big or you were growing a tree this thing seems to be pretty fast growing then you would need a lot of that plant matter so ideally you want to find some weeds or some kind of safe leaf you can harvest uh, it'd be better if you can get the root system too I'm not sure whether you need to always sterilize it but definitely I'd have to watch for pests and bugs so it's day 84 and the compound leaves are yet bigger you can see relative to my hand um, these trios of leaflets that form a compound leaf these pinnately compound leaves where there's only one petiole with three uh, giant leaflets coming off of it um, they're pretty big and some towards the back don't look as healthy I think some of these compound leaves grew at a time when that was before I layered on the clay loam so they're just lacking nutrition and do that curling thing on the edges so that happened with some of my melon vines um, in 2013 2014 the honeydew and then later the Charente melon vines so for the Charente melon vines um, well the vine I just grew one I started indoors with clamp lamps with very weak LED lights and I remember that was the first and only series for a very long time where I went out there and hauled in 50 pounds of wild clay loam and that grew really really quickly in the beginning the leaves were enormous so if you're interested definitely go back and check that out just for a reference point it wasn't that exciting a series afterwards because I just didn't provide it with natural light so it couldn't grow that big and eventually it just got powdery mildew all over probably just due to the indoor conditions so you can see there are still some small uh, modeled compound leaves I think I already talked about that so it's not a big deal I could always trim off the stuff that's not aesthetic but I think the plant is doing really really well on its own so I, I'll just leave it alone for quite a while and see what happens. Uh, that leaf is curled sort of backwards. So I think from this point on, if my theories are correct, we shouldn't be seeing any more of those. No new ones should be forming. So if I were to trim off everything that's curled and stunted in development or slightly mottled yellow, um, based on my theory that the plant is receiving more than enough nutrition now proper nutrition and the root system is a lot healthier due to adding of the clay loam then we shouldn't see any more leaves like that it'd be an interesting experiment so if you're watching this and you've grown everything in potty mix then follow my lead of the last few episodes and by all means get some real dirt and shovel it on top let it trickle in through successive waterings and watch your plants uh, regain health or be nursed back to health it certainly worked for this plant the raspberry cane and in my adjacent pot to the right the upper right here my Swiss shard growing series has gotten back on track it was getting off to a really slow start much like most of my plant growing series and 
say 2016, 2017, when I had sterilized uh, potting mix, I don't believe it's so much that the soil is lacking in microbes, although that is a problem, but it was more just due to potting mix being an unsuitable growing medium for uh, establishing root connections. It just doesn't make a lot of surface area contact. So you have these underdeveloped, slow growing plants that continuously wilt even in this limited a balcony sun that I receive every day. It's, a, it's not full sun so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's only April 2018 so it's not that hot either and the sun isn't as direct as it would be in say June or uh, the rest of summer to follow. So that's basically it and I think well it seems like everything's on track to recovering right now or doing better on my balcony I got rid of the the scale insects for my Joshua tree and I scooped wild dirt on top of the potting mix for that too which means since I'm using potting mix for a lot of these pots I'm still going to get a lot of uh, fungus nests well maybe not a lot I just see one here and there if I uh, go in and out of the balcony I might see one inside my apartment later on but the problem is largely gone and at some point when I've replaced everything with wild dirt it'll just cease.